Hey, oh, yep, we're on. <laughs> what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chiefs Chat. Uh, my name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Uh, before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely, and they told me to stress lovely, lovely co host <laughs> Julia Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all ladies doing? Oh, gosh. Hi, Chief. <laughs> doing good. <laughs> Hi, Chief. We are good. And we do you want to say that your predecessor never referred to us as lovely. So thank you. Thank you for that. We well, appreciate I, it. Well, I'm, going, I'm going to change the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so today we have a very special guest uh, that's been doing some outstanding work for our veterans. Julie, do you mind uh, introducing today's guest? Not at all, Chief. You're right. We are very honored to have today's guest with us. He served in the Army National Guard for 27 years, including two tours in Iraq. And after his retirement last year, he was unanimously elected as National Commander for Disabled American Veterans. Please join us in welcoming Commander Stephen Butch Whitehead. Yay! Thanks, guys. Thanks, Al. Butch, 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 Thanks, Butch, 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 Butch. <laughs> <laughs> Butch, thanks so much for joining us and taking time out of your day. We really appreciate it. And for everybody watching, thank you as well. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for, for Butch, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. So then you'll know who's coming up next. Awesome. Well, Butch, thank you for joining us today. It's great having you with us. Uh, I first want to start off asking about your your, your name, Butch. Uh, it's a very <laughs> unique name. It, it, it probably comes with a lot of misconceptions. Uh, oh, so, of <laughs> <laughs> so can you please uh, give, give us a little insight on, on your name? I sure can, Chief. You know, and it's actually, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me on. It's truly an honor to be joining you, Chief, and your uh, talk here. It's great to be part of it. The nickname, though, Chief, it's a, it is very unique. I actually had it ever since I was a little baby. You know, I think I was the first name my uh, mom and dad's friends gave me was Butch. And it stuck with me all through my life, all childhood, all the way to today. Uh, so it's very unique because of the fact of it's actually, I don't know where my friends, my, my parents' friends came came up with the name Butch. So I asked, I always asked, was it because of short hair I had? Did I not have hair? What was this whole thing that got me Butch? <laughs> and I never got a true answer out of anybody about how I got the word Butch. So it's just, but it stuck. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I, I think the dog in, in Tom and Jerry's name was Butch too. Uh, if that I'm could be, mistaken. maybe I was a big cartoon guy, you know, it could be that, exactly that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I, I told, I was telling my co-host uh, yesterday, I should change my name to Butch because then that that'll our our complaints will probably decline a lot if I have to go to Chief Butch to, to, to put a complaint against the AC. So. There you go. There you yeah. go. So that's awesome. So where, where are you calling us from today? Well, Chief, I'm actually on here in this great state of Minnesota. Uh, and I was talking to the host this morning. It we finally we flipped the page here a little bit and it's gorgeous weather for us right now. Um, I think in today's high is supposed to be maybe 78, 79 degrees, low humidity. Oh. Uh, it's it's gorgeous up here in Minnesota. That's awesome. When is the when is the switch flip up there? For <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll get a nice couple more, a couple weeks of hot weather, humid weather. Um, but the the weather the last I would say July was very very hot for us. I mean, I think we were in the 90s, and then with the heat index into the hundreds for several days in July. So it was very hot. And here in Minnesota, with all of the lovely 10,000 plus lakes that we have, the humidity cranks up pretty high pretty quickly when you get those warm days. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So Butch, can you tell us a little bit about your military career and kind of what led you to a life of service? You know, the military for me, it was kind of a family driven thing. Uh, both my grandparents, my father, my, uh, my I'm the baby of seven, and all three of my brothers oh. joined the military as well. Um, Everybody thought I was going to be joining the Air Force. Chief, I'm sure you like to hear that. Uh, my <laughs> oldest brother was Army. Next brother was Navy. Next brother was Marine. So that just left either the Coast Guard or Air Force. So all of my aunts and uncles, so I guess Butch is going to Air Force. And here I went Army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was one of those things that I was actually going to enlist in the Marines. Uh, my brother that was in the Marines, he was, uh, when I turned 17, he was actually deployed to Kuwait for the Gulf War. And uh, he was one of my idols, and I looked up to him. Uh, obviously, he and I were the closest in age. 
but he had the power of calling back, talking to mom, dad. The same day, I actually set up a meeting with a Marine recruiter to come to my house. And he said, do not let him join the Marines. <laughs> I, I, I'm so baffled by that, you know. Uh, but he wanted me to go off to be a college. Uh, so I joined the Army National Guard at the age of 17. And uh, one thing that's changed from the bio that you read there, uh, Julie, is I'm actually still serving. Um, oh. I actually didn't fully retire. I took a leave of absence when I became commander. And instead of going into the full retirement, I stayed in. And now I am also the division, uh, 34th Infantry Division Command Sergeant Major for the 34th Infantry Division up here in Minnesota. One of the one of eight Army National Guard uh, divisions. Oh, that's great. Uh, I did not know that. Thank you for, I I'm sorry I got it wrong. Um, I apologize. No, no, and it, thank it's you. Thing, for... It's the bio that was out there last year, you know, when I was, when I was elected, that's the true thing, you know, but later on, um, I decided to keep the uniform on. I never fully retired um, and uh, continue to serve today. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And, and so just to give you a little uh, history on myself, I started off in the Marine Corps. So, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. And so nobody gave me that briefing, don't join the Marine Corps. I, was pretty, <laughs> I, just, I just went, well, the recruiter showed up at my house and then the rest was history. So there's a yep. the story behind that. But I Must be some of the Marine that. recruiters are a little bit more aggressive than the Army, the Air Force. <laughs> Marine recruiters must be a little bit more aggressive when it comes to that. Yeah, I, I think I was 16 when they started. I, they, they started pretty early. <laughs> Wow. And so Butch, now you're serving still with the Disabled American Veterans or DAV. So can you tell us a little bit more about DAV? What's your mission? Who do you serve? And then what resources do you offer? You know, when I, you know, Leah, that's a great question because, you know, one thing that really thrives really well with me with the DAV and why I'm so proud to be, you know, part of it, and uh, not just because I'm a national commander, but just being a member of the organization is it's truly my passion that is taking care of those that, you know, fight for our, our, our country. And when I came home from my deployment to Iraq, um, we had a bunch of Vietnam veterans there that met us when we got off the bus. And uh, the message that they told me is that we'll take care of you. We have your back. And I truly, it really sunk in really hard with me because of the fact of I didn't know what I was getting into now. You know what? A lot of things have changed. Life does not stop. Uh, when you deploy and we're in the military, life continues. And on a deployment, I was on a 18 month long deployment to Iraq and a lot of change when I came home, knowing that somebody was there for me and uh, the DV was that. So I was able to lean on the DV through some uh, struggles that I had. Uh, they got me to uh, identify the resources that I needed to continue to move forward and not, you know, fall into deeper into a darker hole. But the DV was definitely there for me. Awesome. So, can, Bush, can you tell the viewers about the benefits of having a DAV membership and uh, how can people know? You know, in, Chief, you're you, when you're in the military, you're part of a family, right? And when you wear that uniform, there, there's brothers and sisters all around you. And being a member of the DAV is just that, too. You know, none of us have a uniform on. We take that uniform off, serve our country, and now we put a different uniform on, and that's our civilian uniform. But the DAV is still a family. And some of the perks about being a DAV member is we are very tight, we're very connected, but some of the, you know, special perks, you know, we have great benefits that our members, they can save on their prescriptions for their medication. Uh, we get discounts when you purchase, you know, um, more Ford company is a huge, huge support of ours. And being a member, they give us a little perk for when you buy new vehicles and stuff like that. Um, when we rent vehicles, you know, AFIS, budgets, and stuff like that. So there's all these little miscellaneous small perks, but I would say the biggest benefit we have is being it we have another family that we can lean on through uh, some tough times that we don't, we're not left out there by ourselves. That's awesome. So you took, you mentioned this a um, little bit before, but you became national commander last year, 2020 has been pretty crazy so far. So how has the pandemic affected DAV and veterans in general? You know, I think the biggest, uh, well, I wouldn't say issue. The big, biggest hurdle that we've had uh, across, Julie, when it comes to the COVID and what it's done to uh, the veterans, it's really, you know, put a hinder on our veterans getting the health care, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the VA's really slowed back, cut back on their appointments. You couldn't, you know, they shut down the doors and some of them for inpatient. It was only outpatient only. But it also, it forced us to expand, you know, making sure the VA is looking at other resources. And that has been a great resource to the COVID has helped us become more telehealth. 
right? Now we have yeah. veterans understanding the telehealth and how that's also still being able to get you the healthcare you need, you know, seeing a doctor and things like that. So that's been a big thing for us, uh, pushing for that, advocating for that. Um, the COVID also has affected, you know, a lot of our, this is a hundred year. We are actually celebrating a hundred year centennial this year. And we've had to cancel a lot of our events, well, all of our events actually so far mm-hmm. since my last travel was in February. Uh, I haven't traveled since. And um, <laughs> we had a lot of trips planned in between there. So while it's a good thing, I've been able to stay home longer, but it's also, I, I look as a downfall for the fact of, I wanted that the, you know, the country needs to know that we're, we made a hundred years and here's why we made the hundred years. You know, we're doing such wonderful things, taking care of our veterans out there that fought for us. And, um, but we're still going to continue to do that. Uh, but it's that we just had to ch- change the way how we do it. Oh, well, well, happy anniversary. Happy 100th to you guys. That's, that's yes. quite a milestone. And I'm sorry that you guys, have, that it's kind of been more subdued this year. That's, that's disappointing for sure, but I hope that you guys are able to, you know, find other ways to connect, whether that's virtually or find other ways to celebrate their great work that you guys are doing. Julie, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, one thing I want to highlight through this uh, pandemic stuff, this COVID, what it really did is we were still able to help thousands of veterans, you know, with their benefits. You know, we really shall, we were still able to do because of technology. Uh, we didn't stop helping veterans through any of this COVID time. And that was a huge win for us because as we all know, the COVID-19 affected so many people when it came to unemployment and loss of revenue and things like that. And our veterans rely on their disability. And if that's only income they have coming in, or maybe we're waiting on it, we're able to still help them through that. As well as we, we started up a a grant process that veterans could apply for a uh, small grant if they were a disabled veteran that we were able to help give a supplement income as well. That's great. That's great that you're still taking care of family, just like you have done for 100 years. You didn't let the pandemic stop that. So hats off to you for sure. Thank you. Yes. And uh, like I said, happy anniversary uh, to DAV and all the viewers out there. Uh, so earlier this year, the, the exchange was honored to provide a new benefit to veterans. Uh, all veterans with service-connected disabilities were welcome back to their exchange with in-store shopping privileges. In your view, what's the feedback that you get, get from the veteran community on that benefit? It's been long overdue is what I've been hearing. You know, they were so happy. We've been advocating for that change for several years, and we were so happy, and our members were so happy. The disabled veterans were happy, happy to have that change. You know, as we all know, a lot of our veterans, they have a tendency to live really close to the military bases that's just the life they they knew that's where they tend to go back to and be close to the military bases and have the ability to go in and take part and be you know the AFEs and the great service that you guys provide it's a great tool it's a great thing that the veterans really are proud to be part of and they wanted to use uh so they were very very excited to be able to come in and use the, the benefits of AFEs. yes they absolutely deserve it so uh we're glad that they're you know at back back on bases and, uh, and shopping with AP. That's great. And Butch, <clears throat> you've been with DAV for a while, including as the adjutant for the Department of Minnesota. Can you talk about how you first became involved with the organization? Yeah, Leah, you know, as I said a little earlier, you know, when I got off that bus and that Vietnam veteran who happened to be a DAV member, you know, when that, that organization itself reached out to me to make sure that they were there for me, that really excited me. It fell in love, it made me fall in love with and kind of drive my passion. And, you know, my wife has been a huge supporter of that. And I think that's what kind of drove me to be part of the DAV is she always said when that phone rang, it would be one of my soldiers. I would literally drop what I was doing and be there for that soldier. And that's literally what got me excited, got me through my tough times as well. And that's what the DAV did for me. And I wanted to continue doing that. So here up in Minnesota, being the adjutant, uh, being part of the setting up program of services at the local level that national does, but even expanding them a little further. Uh, for instance, here in Minnesota, we have a wonderful, you know, obviously I said earlier, I talked about the 10,000 lakes, right? We're a huge outdoor community up here and, you know, taking disabled veterans and getting them back in the outdoors when you're disabled, not knowing that, well, I suppose I can't do that anymore because I'm disabled. And we're showing these disabled veterans that even with a disability, they can still get back out and enjoy the activity. So that's the one of the great passion about here in Minnesota, being the adjutant and at the national level, continuing to spread the word and letting the disabled veterans are 
know that they're not alone and that there's somebody there to help them through any struggles he or she may be going through that there's people out there that care and want to help them. And that's so important, especially right now when people are feeling more confined and feeling that they can't go out and do things to be able to show them that you, you can go outside and you, you can still have a life and you do still matter. And you, we are all part of a big connected family. That's terrific. Absolutely yeah. terrific. Exactly. And yeah, to still feel connected to people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, one of the great programs at the national level that we partner with uh, Veterans Affairs, I want to highlight, there's two great programs that we do. One is called the Winter Sports Clinic, uh, which is out in uh, Colorado. And that's um, a program where we're showing these disabled veterans that you know there's downhill skiing, it's uh, sledding, it's cross country skiing, rock climbing. We bring in hundreds of disabled veterans all across the country and a you're bonding with other veterans maybe have a similar injury or illness that you have but we're also teaching them like I said earlier that you can still do things and then the other event is the T tournament uh it's partnered with the VA as well that's held in Iowa Iowa City and I think about 80 percent of those veterans that participate Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if we lost them in that. Which I think you may be frozen. If we you might have lost, us. yeah, we might have lost you. Let's cross our fingers that you come back. Hmm. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear Yay. you now. Yay. Yay. Welcome back to Chief Chat. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I don't I love this technology. Um, I know, right? <laughs> boom, it's gone. It's okay. So, but no, what I was saying is about the tea tournament and how 80% of the participants are legally blind and we're all golfing three or four days, you know, a legally blind person and showing them that they can still golf, you know, and that oh. was, it's just a, when you see it, you get, you know, choked up, you just get emotional yourself. And you're like, oh my God, I'm glad I'm part of an organization that's doing this for veterans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure they can still beat me in golf. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not <laughs> <They're beating> me. <laughs> <laughs> so you became the national commander last year. And then you were talking about how this year there wasn't a convention. So you kind of have an additional, what you have an additional year to serve an additional year to get things done. Um, so what are some of your goals and any specific initiatives that you're focusing on? You know, with it being a one-year commitment and like you were saying, we didn't have our convention. So I did get extended one more year, which I'm honored to serve. You know, I'm very honored to serve uh, one additional year. But one of the goals I'm still very pushing for is the advocacy uh, for veterans and making sure our legislators are, you know, doing what they should be to take care of those that serve. You know, a couple big things that we're continuing to push for is the caregivers, you know, and people forget about, they don't forget, but they have a tendency to not remember that when that service members wearing that uniform, there's usually a caregiver on the backside, you know, a spouse and things like that. And when the service member becomes a disabled veteran, that caregiver sometimes has to make some sacrifices he or she as well. And we want to make sure that they're taken care of. So that's a big initiative of mine. And then as well as I want to make sure we continue to uh, advocate, you know, for the burn pit and toxic exposure. It's another big issue that I think our service members are being exposed to. Uh, we were calling it very similar to the Agent Orange that our Vietnam veterans uh, are ex exposed to. So the advocacy is very important to me, but also the, on the other side is continuing to make sure that all of our veterans are being taken care of. Awesome, man. And yeah, those burn pits, uh, I know a lot of, uh, you know, fellow fellow service members that, that uh, were in charge of, you know, stirring the, the, the burn pit and, and, and being, you know, uh, at lower ranks do, doing those type of duties. So I'm glad you're, you're advocating uh, for their health uh, because yep. it, it, it does have long-term effects. It does. And, we, it's, and so we, we don't know what they are. We don't know what they are. Yeah. Uh, so, and you mentioned about the uh, convention being canceled uh, last year and, and congrats on your new term. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, and I know COVID just changed a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, how, how are you guys going to reach out to the veterans despite not having an annual event this year? You know, we're, we're actually doing a virtual 
uh, update here. Actually, next week, we're actually going to do a virtual uh, update with all of our members. We sent that out. To, uh, so we're still going to do our, our reports. It just will be no elections. It's going to be all information only. So we're doing that virtual uh, event as well as we're continuing to rely on our, our local chapters um, and departments to continue to get out and do the outreach and just maybe smaller gatherings. Uh, we can't do these big gatherings, obviously, because of the CDC and this COVID. Keeping our, our members safe is very important to us but we can still get out there and research, uh, not research, but reach our disabled veterans to make sure that they're being taken care of. And I'll tell you what we're using today, the Zoom meeting, it's a great tool. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. And who would have thought, you know, five years ago, this is gonna be the way we're holding meetings, conducting interviews, but I'll tell you, it's been a godsend to be able to still do our work and still be able to reach out to veterans. Excellent. So Butch, just want to pause for a second and take a look at the live feed. Um, wanted to share that people are tuning in, they're watching from really all over the world. Um, as far as Germany right now, it looks like. Um, Christina says, so very honored to be of service to our military. I couldn't join. And so for me, this is such a great way to serve. Oh, awesome. So Thank you. I'm not sure what capacity Christina is serving in, but thanks to Christina and Butch. Thank you for your service as well. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for your time this morning. And then be before we wrap up, can you tell us where can veterans go to find out more information about DAV and all of the resources available to them? You know, our website, it has a lot of great information on it. It's, you know, the DAV.org. And I'll say that again, DAV.org. Um, you can go there and if you need help or have some questions about a particular filing for benefits or anything with the VA, you can click on it and type in your zip code and it'll tell, pull up the closest resource for you. But as well as a, if you want to volunteer, uh, our website has a great link to show you where you can sign up to be a volunteer as well. So DAV.org is a great, great tool. Got it, DAV. Dot org. Uh, last year, Leah and I were honored to attend the convention in Orlando. We had a great time and we really enjoyed talking with, yes, um, we, it was it was a good weekend. We got to talk with some of your members. And I remember, Leah, we talked to a 92-year-old World War II and Korean War Navy veteran who was going to have um, be welcomed back with his exchange shopping mm -hmm. privileges in store in January. And he and his wife, they were overjoyed. They lived in Columbia, South Carolina. They were going to be able to go to Fort Jackson to shop in person. And he was just blown away. He was one of the most memorable people I've ever met in, in my yes. life. Um, it was such a great, I'm so honored to have been there with y'all and to, to be able to talk to him and, um, help make, you know, a difference to, to those who have served, um, our, yeah. our great nation. So it was great. And it's a great tool. And we got to keep advocating and let make sure everybody knows it's out there. I still think we have veterans that are not aware that this, um, policy change and we got to keep pushing for that to make sure that again it's such a great great tool a great resource for our disabled veterans to be able to take advantage of we got to make sure that they know about it awesome absolutely awesome. yeah well butch man thank you so much for for just your dedicated service of uh, in uniform and out of uniform you've been doing a a, a ton for for our country for for a, a lot of years so thank you for your uh unwavering service to our our, our country uh, thank you for taking some time to chat with us today. Uh, you shared a, a bunch of wonderful, valuable information out there. So hopefully people uh, get on DAV.org. Maybe we can post it in our uh, comment section uh, so people yes, can sir. have the link. Uh, this means so much to the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coasties. Uh, we wish you all the best and thank you uh, for taking care of our veterans. Thank you, Chief. And uh, Leah, Julie, thank you. Uh, I, I was truly honored to be part of it. And I really enjoyed my time uh, chatting with you guys today. Yeah. And if you don't mind staying, uh, staying after the live feed, uh, I, I got to get some information from you. Absolutely. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Thanks, Butch. Bye. Thanks, right. everybody. Thank Take care. All right. Thank Chief you. Chat out. Yeah.